success club for today. Um, so I've been thinking about talking on this topic for a while, uh, which is um, best like even GitHub practices when adapting code. Um, um, and I wanna give you a bit of a journey through time through things that I, uh, strategies I've tried in the past. And as always, you can find the link to the, uh, to the material on the, um, on the public Google sheet about the Arsets Club. So um, really a bit um, before really using Git or GitHub, what I used to do was um, at the top of the script, I would put a little comment or even on like, uh, if it was a section of a, of a script that I had adapted, uh, maybe um, above that section, I would put a comment saying like adapted from and then I would put the path to the script. Um, typically, these paths were um, on JSPC, the, um, the compute cluster that we have access to. Um, and so I know that I did this a while back on the Brain Seek Phase 2 project. Um, back then, like me and, um, and Emily Burke were working on very similar projects. Um, and so you can see here, uh, if I search on the Brain Seek Phase 2 project, the word adapted. Um, it shows up on a few of them. Um, um, and sometimes the path might even just be like uh, very relative because it was from that same directory. Um, 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 and uh, yeah, here's another, here's an example where it says like adapted from then this directory and this steal of one and it has a path to the script. And so back when I was doing this, uh, if, um, um, and I was very familiarized with both scripts. So it was very easy for me to tell you like um, what the script, who made it or um, where it lived. Um, this happened like around 2018, 2017, maybe 2019. Uh, if you ask me now, it would be a bit harder for me to tell you who wrote that initial script. Um, I mean, in this particular case, I do know, but um, uh, you're basically making your life difficult to remember uh, who made the original script. Um, and then the other thing is um, file paths change. So let's say someone decided to go into this project, Brain Seek Phase 2 QSV, um, and reorganize files. At that point, um, the hard path that I have here wouldn't work anymore. Also, um, the uh, the root, sorry, the um, internal project path could stay the same, but the root path for the project leaves can change. And that's actually happening right now as uh, Ryan, Nick, uh, Gio, um, and Bit Support are currently transferring data from what used to be the DCL1 disk to a different disk, BCSO5 or, or uh, some other places. Um, so, Doing this, while it's better than nothing, uh, doesn't last very long. Um, 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 so that was the first strategy. Then as you kind of saw already, um, I started to adapt this strategy to say like, adapt it from it and then I will put the GitHub URL. Um, um, so you can see that over here, uh, where it says like, oh, adapt it from, and I have the GitHub URL for that script. This is a little bit better in the sense that um, um, you're now immune to changing disks. Um, also, typically we don't change the organization account for the repository is hosted. So it's a little bit more permanent. Also, um, if you rearrange the files in let's say um, the QSVA brain repository, um, as long as the reversion control from the beginning, GitHub will be able to tell you like, oh, this file, uh, this file has changed, right? The name. Um, so you'll be able to find uh, things. Um, but of course, um, uh, if we look a little bit longer into this um, example over here, um, it's not a GitHub permalink. So you don't really know what specific version of that script that I adapted. Um, because that own, that own script can evolve over time um, uh, independently from the script you're adapting from. So you lose track of that piece of information. Um, 
Um, cool. So um, if you change the repository name, um, things can break a bit. Uh, I mean, GitHub will try to wrap uh, things for a few months, but um, not for years. Um, um, so, I mean, there's still like situations where GitHub permalinks can still fail. Now, in, separately from like linking to a file, another thing is like, how do, how do you keep track of your edits? Um, um, and so my advice for this is if you version control the original version that you're adapting from, then you can easily uh, find like, what are all the changes that you've made over time? Um, however, like I find it even, um, even if I know this myself, it can be very tempting to like just copy the script and immediately start adapting um, before you make a git commit, before you save on your git history um, that you adapt, that you copy this code. And so if you do that, you're going to have a git commit where you're going to have both things that someone else did and things you did. And you won't be able to differentiate the two of them. I mean, you will like a day later, but like maybe not six months or a year from then. So you're not going to remember, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, what lines of code were yours, what lines of code were from someone else, or what tweaks you made. Um, um, so um, another another like Git and GitHub strategy that I tried uh, for a while was like. I was like, I found it really easy to just tag people, like be like, oh, I'm adapting this script from, let's say, Emily Burke, and I will put her um, GitHub username on my commit message. But if you do that, um, like, let's say, like, let's go to like the Brain Seek Phase 2 history, there's 633 commits on it. Um, it's not going to be easy to, you know, read and find like, um, where I like tag uh, Emily. Also, like GitHub history over here shows you the title of the Git commit. Uh, but like, for example, this one over here that is longer, you would need to click on it and then see like, hey, did I actually mention someone there? Um, so um, that doesn't work as much uh, or very well. Um, and so my current strategy, uh, which I want to separate here, is what I do is like, let's say I'm adapting this, um, um, a full script. I first copy that full script and, and immediately, uh, oh, sorry, that's if I'm working from, a, I'm adapting a, a, a yeah, full script. If I'm adapting just a chunk, then I try to just copy a, a continuous uh, code chunk, even if I'm going to delete some pieces in the middle. Um, um, so I copy all of that without any alterations to original code. And then without you know, even touching it, then I version control it immediately. Um, and then on the commit message, I also include a GitHub permalink to the source. And we're like, oh, well, I copied this code from this other, um, um, this other location. Um, that's only if it has a GitHub permalink, which uh, I mean, a, a GitHub repository, which internally we're trying to use GitHub for every project. So, um, um, uh, ideally, this uh, the situation where uh, there's no GitHub permalink would be a rare situation. The other thing I do now is um, I check um, the history of the original file to find uh, the authors of the original uh, script. Um, and so, once I know who are the original authors of the of, of the script that I'm adapting from, I then use the syntax um, that GitHub has. I mean, Git has for um, labeling that you've made a commit with other people. And so, this there's a um, a blog on the GitHub uh, website from 2018, um, uh, January 2018, um, that specifies how you can do that. And so, like I was telling you, BrainSeq phase two was like from 2017, 18, 19. So as you can see, like when I started like and initially just tagging people on, on the commit messages, this syntax didn't exist. So once I found out about this syntax, I was like, oh yes, I'm gonna use it. The issue with the syntax is that it's a little bit like, um, um, like not user-friendly. You need to type like co-author-by colon space, then a name 
then inside of um, less than and greater than, you have to put the email of the person that um, that you're trying to give credit. And so you kind of need to know the email of everyone um, that you're working with, uh, but not only their what are emails they have, but in particular, the emails that they have linked to their GitHub accounts. Um, so that's why, like, if you, if you look at the team collaborators information, uh, column O over here, uh, sorry, column P now, uh, has uh, that syntax. Uh, so that's why I have it there. And it's a bit of a, uh, like an easy dictionary where you can go search for the person you need to find uh, and then just copy paste the, that syntax. That's how I made it easier. Uh, we probably should have something like that for everyone at the Libre Institute GitHub account, um, organization account. That's something that uh, uh, I've talked about with you a little bit. And so once you do that, then you're giving credit to the original authors of uh, the source code um, uh, when you make a commit. Um, 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 and I only really do this at the very uh, for that very first commit when I'm adapting their code. Um, sorry, where I'm just fully copying their code. Once I do that, um, there's two ways you can go. One of them is you can uh, immediately after that uh, make some uh, changes you want. For example, like I like to automatically style code. Um, and then at that point, if I'm automatically styling code, I also make a commit immediately after that because I don't want to have a commit where I have both automatically style code and then also made uh, some of my own edits. That way I can, um, um, that way I can in the future separate what is what are things that I can really change myself versus like okay like automatic styling is um, um, I wouldn't consider it like really a, like an intellectual contribution at that point. Um, um, cool. Um, also note that sometimes you might have, uh, for example, you use in our studio, you might have some settings that uh, can lead to changes that you might not notice by eye, but that Git does notice. So if, um, for example, there's a setting in our studio where you can ask it to uh, remove any white space at the end of lines. Um, so let's say someone ends a sentence with like uh, a period and like four spaces after that, it would like automatically find and delete those four spaces. Um, another one is, let's say you're working on different operating systems, depending on your RStudio settings, um, particularly with Windows users, uh, you can change the line endings. Um, and so you don't want to have a commit, um, a commit that mixes both like uh, stylistic or um, um, machine related changes uh, from your actual uh, own changes that you're making. After that, once you're done with all of that, then you can start making edits to to your to the code and commit. And I, you know, I typically just edit a small section, um, then make a commit after that. Uh, eventually, I might make a lot of commits. So some examples. One of them is over here, where um, 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 there's this uh, there's this script. Uh, sorry, there's other things getting on the way. Um, there's a script. Um, let me get out of the history. Yeah. Uh, code 22. There's a script over here that um, where I adapted some code for that Nick wrote. Uh, I adapted a code chunk that he wrote. So uh, if I go on the history of it, um, uh, we can find at some point that there is a commit over here where uh, uh, both me and Nick are authors. And so we look at that commit message and I say like, hey, I copied code um, and I put here the link uh, where I copied the code from. This is actually not a GitHub permalink, so it could have been a little bit better. And then I give um, Nick uh, a credit by saying like, well, I co-authored it with him. And so I got this information from that Google Sheet where I have all the emails of everyone. Um, so in this case, like Nick had made a plotting function. Um, um, and um, that's what I wanted to use um, uh, over here. Um, once I did that, then uh, 
uh, started that in like that plotting code and you can easily find like what are some of the changes that I made um, to, to that plotting code. Uh, so the, the specific changes, they don't matter here. It's just that like now um, we have two separate commits um, and you can, um, and Nick here is given authorship of that, of that commit. Um, now by doing it that way, it's not like you go to the GitHub history and then find like, where are the commits where like uh, someone else uh, uh, contributed. Um, that's not how I search for things, but um, uh, GitHub has this nice feature where if you go to the insights um, of um, a GitHub repository, inside of it, you can find the contributors graph. And so in this graph here, um, right now it's, um, this repository has quite a bit of data, uh, but it's gonna show us like um, all the, um, all the commits that everyone made over time. So I'm gonna um, move on because this one is gonna maybe take a little time to load. We'll come back to it in a, in a second or two. Uh, so that was one example. Another example is uh, this one over here, where um, there's this script called uh, check degradation matrix on this project. Um, and if you look at the history, it looks pretty short, uh, but that's because I renamed the script. And so GitHub here is telling you like, oh, actually this file was originally named this other thing. So you can, uh, it links the history of both of them. Um, and actually that same file was renamed at a previous time also. Uh, so you can find all of, the, all of the history. And so the very, very first commit of this script is one where I made it uh, giving credit to Andrew. Um, in this case, there's no GitHub permalink because the code didn't exist on GitHub. Um, so he just sent me a script um, 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 via Slack, I think. Um, um, and so I was like, okay, let's copy all of his script. Once I did that, then um, uh, you can find here the third commit was like I automatically styled the code. Um, and so that introduces a bunch of changes. And um, I didn't want to mix all of those changes with actual changes that I was making. Um, so like, for example, Andrew likes to use the equal sign, <laughs> like for me, it's easier to read our code with like the arrow for assignment, um, et cetera. Um, um, and it's also easier for me to read code if it's um, automatically styled, it's uh, easier for me to understand it and all of that. So that's why I was like, before adapting it, I was like, okay, I'm going to automatically style it. So it will be easier for me to read it. Um, and then after that, like, well, uh, uh, there's a bunch of changes that are made to it, right? Um, and the, that whole history tracks all of those changes. Um, so yeah, like I, I was saying, um, the great benefit of doing this is now you can go to the GitHub contributors graph um, and see, you know, who has contributed to a particular project. Um, um, and if you don't do this, it's, it's going to be really hard for you at the end of a project that might take like a lot of projects take longer than a year to remember who are all the contributors, right? Uh, um, so this GitHub graph can remind you that like, oh yeah, um, uh, maybe you don't remember that, you know, let's say Maddie here, right? Um, uh, in like 2022, made a few contributions, right, to the code, right? Uh, this is like uh, more than a year ago from now. Um, uh, and so by tracking things like this, you can remember like, oh yeah, maybe Maddie should be a co-author, right? But you could be like, oh, well, maybe Renee only made one thing here. Uh, so you could be like, well, maybe maybe Renee, um, yeah, I mean, you can check what was that one commit she made, um, but maybe it's not um, um, uh, enough to be considered a co-author of the project, uh, but it could be uh, maybe a reminder that um, potentially you, you want to acknowledge them um, in the acknowledgement sections of, of your paper. Um, cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what I had uh, prepared for today. Um, um, I don't know if people have any questions or maybe other strategies that you want to share. Um, 
So the history links, they're those are permanent though, even well, Git history can be um in theory, GitHub and GitHub history, you're not supposed to edit it. Okay. Um, and GitHub tries to make it hard for you to not edit it, uh, but it can be edited. Okay. So, so semi-permanent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to make everything super permanent, you would need to basically every, uh, you can like link your repository to Zenodo and then deposit your code every time you make a commit to Zenodo, but that's that's, that's like too much work. Uh, we only do it for like major milestones. Um, Application. Yeah, in yeah. yeah, our preprints. Um, yeah, um, that, that's actually something nice. Like Zenodo, when you when you link a repository to Zenodo, uh, let's look at one like. Um, uh, like this one over here. Um, Zenodo creates this authorship uh, list based on that GitHub contributors graph. Um, and so, and it orders people by number of commits. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's something uh, nice about, about it. I was wondering how this uh, integrates with the, the old git blame thing. I don't know, it sounds... So git blame is not the best name for things, but um, <laughs> it's a command that, like, let's look at um, one of the examples I was uh, mentioning. Um, um, so when I know I made a lot of... Um, I, I love a lot of changes to it. So it's um it has map so, so let, let me let, let me just explain it blame for people. So um you can see when you when you open a script on GitHub you can see this thing over here on the left that says blame. The git blame command uh, really is a command for showing um uh, what's the last commit where that line was edited? Um, and so this particular script uh, has maybe 30 or 40 commits to it. Um, and so we can see here on the left, um, like these two lines, they were last edited when I auto style the code, um, which uh, I already showed you was like the third commit in the, in the life of this script. Um, um, so a lot of them, the last commit comes from that. Um, but the other ones, um, like for example, here, this output comes from this commit where I say, like, I'm start exploring the relationship with QSVs. Um, and so git blame can be nice if you find a bug or a typo and you want to know uh, what were you thinking when you introduced that change? Or like, I mean, you are like the authors of the script, right? Um, so it could be like, well, you know, uh, let's say maybe I'm reading the wrong data. You could be like, okay, let's find that commit. What else did I write in that commit message? Um, so she was like saying, like, oh, I'm trying to use recap tree and only created uh, data. Um, um, and so that's why you want to have a lot of like small commits to try to keep track of what you're thinking when you make a change. Uh, so this is independent from adapting code or not. In general, you you want to be able to do this because if you if you let's say after full days of work where you change uh, tons of lines in a particular script, if you make one commit, then later on when you try to find like what you were thinking when you made that one commit, it's just gonna be too big, too hard to 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 basically use it as like I imagine you're a detective, use it, use it as like evidence to try to you know remind yourself. Remind yourself what you were thinking, why you made that change, et cetera. So the name blame, I guess, comes from like um, trying to say like, oh, this bug that was introduced over here, who, you know, who's to blame for introducing that bug, right? And like in this case, that would be me, and that would be the particular uh, command where I did it. Uh, but I don't, I don't like the name of it. Um, 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 it should be named something else. So. 
So yeah, like in this case, because I automatically styled the code and basically every line in the script got changed. <laughs> you don't see, um, in this case, I, I copied the code from Andrew. Um, you don't see his uh, face pop up in any commit. <laughs> Um, in, in, in any of this because um, everything got adapted. I guess uh, maybe use the co-author for the committee, use that co-author by syntax. Maybe. I did use that co-author by syntax. That was the very first commit, but because I automatically styled the code and like everything got changed. Everything, yes. Uh, that's why it's like not showing up um, like over here, right? But uh, um, 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 and even later commits could have that uh, co-author by you know syntax, right? Mm -hmm. if you just get introduce a code yeah. at some point later from somebody else, mm -hmm. and you use that co-author by it gonna yeah, it could and like and it's gonna um, show up here. Yeah, right. It would show up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, unless again you automatically style it and like the code yeah, changes a lot. Yeah, because it's just the last commit that mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. Um, so how do, how, how do you determine an authorship is something that's just just been sitting there for years in a project? So uh, maybe, you're on, not, maybe you're not familiar with who it was, or if it's on GitHub. Um, so let's say I want to adapt. Um, um, well, I mean, I, specifically, I'm talking about like on JHPC or something like that, right? Like, yeah. Well, that's, all these things only really work for GitHub. Uh, well, I guess JSPC is maybe there's okay. There's a few different ways of answering that, right? If it's a particular script, so let's say I don't know. Um, that's fine. Um, one of them has uh, like this one, right? You can find the the um, the script and look at the history of it, and then. Uh, try to see like who has made changes to it. And in this case, you can see it's like only me, right? Yeah. So you can be like, oh, well, Leo made that, right? Uh, if you're talking about JHPC, um, um, so, you know, like let's say here, um, I could be, um, if I'm using this file over there, I can notice that like Hedia made it. I don't know if other people edit it, but I know that Hedia made it. Um, so that's as much as you would know, yeah. um, uh, unless you go and directly ask Hedy and be like, hey, who else worked on this? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering about. Like, you know, maybe I use something from someone from a script from someone from years ago who I've never even met. So I can't even ask if anybody, you know. Yeah, so this is the best you can do in that scenario. Right. Yeah. You're trying, I mean, but yeah. 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 Um, but a lot of times we're mostly adapting recent code, right? Um, and a lot of that recent code is on GitHub and you know a bit more who made it. Um, a lot of times you might be adapting code from yourself, um, uh, which at that point you don't, you don't use the git cost or syntax, but you should still make a commit for the very first time you copy something. Um, and like put the GitHub permalink of like, hey, I'm copying it from this other location. Um, uh, you could mix a little bit of the strategies, which is like, you could also have a comment saying like, hey, I, I adapt this code and like put the link to where you adapted it from. Um, um, but I, I haven't done that much nowadays. Um, 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 but you can still do that. Uh, uh, like uh, for me, like this stuff is the most important part. Um, um, because at that point, like GitHub keeps track of who are the authors on the GitHub contributors graph. Um, um, and on the GitHub history, you can find exactly where you got it from uh, because um, you do put that on the first commit message, um, uh, et cetera. Um, uh, putting it as a comment. Um, 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 back in the day when I didn't do all the other strategies, that was useful if you like kind of remember exactly what was in the contents of that other script. But at that point, it's a lot of in your memory, in your head. Um, um, but I mean, you can do both. Now, knowing this, uh, I feel a bit uh, bad because I, I know that I used a lot of code for from Luis, for example, a while ago and integrating stuff. And uh, I didn't consider that. Maybe I put a note there, but I guess I'm wondering now, 
can I go back to the original and use the, I know you can edit the commit messages, but can yeah. you so far back in history and add a co-author by there? You could in theory, but I think that's maybe um, too much work. Uh, the point of me presenting this today was also to make, to raise awareness about this and like use it moving forward. Um, like, it's not like I'm going to go back in time and like edit um, things where like maybe I should have given and give authorship to Emily, right? Or things like that. Because it, it would be a lot of commits. It would be a lot of work to do that. Um, um, uh, and in that case with Emily, I mean, she's a author of the Brain Sick Phase 2 paper. So I did remember <laughs> her contributions, right? Uh, um, um, so that's, uh, in the end, like that's what you want to avoid, right? Like getting to the point where you're ready to submit a manuscript and you forget someone that um, maybe should have been a co-author uh, or an acknowledgement, right? Um, um, you, you just look at the GitHub contributors graph and um, this can be a way of reminding yourself like you know, who made some contributions, uh, whether they were small or like a ton, right? Um, I mean, the ones that are a lot would be released. Should be in theory easy for you to remember that they did a lot, even if they did them like a while back in time, right? Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. So um, I think you should just give it a try. Uh, maybe later on, GitHub will come up with something that is a bit easier than this co-author syntax. Um, 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 and um, uh, right now, because of it, we do need to keep track of it somewhere. Um, uh, because otherwise, you would need to ping someone and be like, hey, what's your email for GitHub every time, right? Um, really, what, what GitHub is using is the, is the email. Because it's uh, the name, you could have typos on the name. It won't, uh, GitHub doesn't use that information, it uses the email. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, one thing that I've seen on the R world is that, um, for example, um, uh, for R packages, particularly those from R Studio, um, they encourage people to send a pull request if they can change something small, um, let's say a documentation typo or something, uh, or like a little bug. Because with a pull request, that person who submitted the pull request, they become part of the GitHub history. And so they use a tool to, between commit, let's say number five and commit number 10, extract all the people who were uh, contributors of those commits. And so every time they make a release of a new version of a package, they list all of the GitHub contributors. And so that's really nice sometimes to see like, um, um, I mean, I'm, it's happened to me where like I submit something small and then you show up on the list of contributors and like, it does feel nice. Um, you feel like included and, and rewarded for, for the contributions you made. Um, 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 so like, because of that, like for example, um, um, uh, also, um, uh, like on an R package, there's a news file. Um, and so there I try to highlight, for example, here, like Louise, and I put her GitHub, um, username to, to give them, um, to highlight that like someone else maybe submitted a pull request and made a change. My packages don't have a lot of pull requests, right? So. Um, it's easy for me to do this manually, um, but it's nice to highlight like when someone else um, you know, contributed and made something. So if you like Louis and Nick did something, right? Um, 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 and so like anyone that like consumes the news file will be able to see like, okay, these people made um, help with, with a particular issue, et cetera. Um, you could also uh, go beyond that and say like, so this actually happened to Nick recently. Uh, uh, on the R world, you could also add people to the description file. And so like Nick, for example, recently became a contributor 
to the spatial experiment package. Uh, and so this I see mostly reserved for people that like made like large pull requests or like larger contributions. Um, 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 yeah. So yeah, congrats. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so um, all of this comes from like in general, I think it's best to give credit to other people as much as you can. Um, 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 I once interviewed at a company and they told me that uh, they're in the process of getting something released. Um, and so at that point, uh, to get a patent, they like, there's people that look at all your scripts and try to find like, did you adapt code from, let's say, like uh, Stack Overflow, things like that. Um, and if you did, you can't claim it as your own. Um, which uh, the person from that company was telling me that makes it harder when they want to ask questions because if it's your if you're the one that posted the code on Stack Overflow, you actually uh, the um, authorship of the code goes to Stack Overflow. You lose it at that point. So if you have a question, you have to like write code in a completely different way for that same question and post it. Um, um, it's also why like a lot of companies don't want to use ChatGPT or things like that. Uh, because um, then they cannot claim their code as their own uh, when they're uh, submitting patents and stuff. And I think GitHub Copilot uh, recently also has this uh, option there to, you know, his Copilot is like you can get suggestions, but you can be, can be, uh, I think, set, be aware about if the code suggested is actually based on some Stack Overflow or some other sources. Because this has implications, as you mentioned, for you know, patenting code and stuff. Yeah. So that's like I think like a, a higher bar than what we're talking about. Um, but um, um, here, what I'm most concerned about is like forgetting someone they should give uh, um, credit for their, um, for their contributions um, um, throughout the life span of a project. Um, I've been trying to be as inclusive as I can and not forget anyone that um, many things that were important. Cool. Um, so I think that's it for today, unless anyone has another question or comment.